let me just say that if a psycho thriller film doesn't cause emotional damage of some sort, then its existence as a thriller is completely pointless. And that's today's topic. Let's talk about Speak No Evil. Welcome to the S.H.I.E.L.D. Network. I am your host, Bad News Harris, and like I said, today, we're talking about Speak No Evil. And just like a lot of my movie reviews recently, since this is a brand new movie still in theaters, I do not have clips to put on screen, so I'm basically ranting. So, let's go for a ride. First, let's give props to the actors James McAvoy, Mackenzie Davis, Scoot McNary, Aisling Francois, Alex Sleepler, and Dan Ho. Their on-screen dynamics together were fantastic, and the children obviously put in the most work, especially Dan Ho as Ant. The plot is, there is a family of three comprised of Ben, Louise, and Agnes, portrayed by Scoot McNary, Mackenzie Davis, and Alex Leffler, respectively. They are vacationing in France um, after a slew of professional and personal problems that began back home, so they dropped things and moved to England, and they are in France for vacation. Well, while out and about, um, they bump into another family, comprised of Patty, Ciara, and Ant, played by James McAvoy, Aisling, Francois, and Dan Ho, who Ben makes an uneasy, yet overlooked and uncomfortable bond with Patty. And see, at first, uh, Patty and Ciara came off as an odd couple of parents that just vibe differently than our protagonists. And feeling they eventually, or blah, a feeling they they eventually move past because Patty would eventually invite them to their old country home. But as time progresses, Patty tends to act more and more abrasive. That's what we'll call it for now. And toward his family, of which our protagonists immediately notice. But Ben, having no sense of self-worth or protection over his family, out of dumbass ignorance, decides to continue and, you know, brush things off. Now, let's put a pin in things here really quick and analyze Patty, Ciara, and Ant. Because, as I said, Patty, he's rather eccentric, and later begins showing his colors as the plot progresses. Ciara, his wife, gives more of an evil hippie vibe that you immediately overlook for the first five minutes before it starts to set in. Now, Ant. Ant is, the, is their son who can't speak. And Patty explains it as his tongue was uh, developed shorter and uh, more swolly than a normal child's, preventing him from being able to audibly speak. And all he can go is, ah! Ah, ah, because he, he only has, like, that much of a tongue on him. And the film does a really good job of Ant trying to warn the family without actually being able to speak. It reminds me of a lot of other psycho thrillers, but none of which I can name offhand at the moment. For some reason, I, I, I it reminds me of the movie Old, but this really has nothing to do with the movie Old. So, you get my point. Maybe not, but we'll, we'll pass that. To continue, the movie progresses to a scene at night where Ben and Louise eventually start audibly fighting over a situation of extramarital origins and eventually cool down and go to sleep. Well, Patty and Ciara hear that through the walls, and while Ben and Louise are asleep, Agnes, they claim that Agnes is yelling and calling for Louise at night, but she never shows up. So Ciara says that she went to grab her, took her to their bed, and then, you know, as a mother, took her to bed and held her. Well, when Louise woke up, 
in the middle of the night. She went to go check on Agnes upstairs with Ant, only to find that she was not in the bed that was made for her. And Louise freaks out, understandably so, and begins searching the house until she finds Agnes in Patty and Ciara's room, in their bed, in Ciara's arms. Yeah, no, that's a big red flag for any family. So, Louise, rightfully so, immediately gets Agnes, rushes back to their room, and demands to Ben that they leave. Which, to Ben's credit, they pack up and do. Now, let, let me put out, point this out, that they do a decent job of showing that at certain times, Ben and or Louise are just horrible parents because they refuse to listen to Agnes whenever she's upset, worried, or when she's having troubles without her travel bunny. And I'll let you handle that scene as you go. But the three of them managed to take off in the middle of the night, but Agnes realizes that she doesn't have her bunny. So, after Ben, being an asshole, keeps saying, You're almost 12, you need to grow out of this. They eventually convince him to turn back around and go back to the college cottage to look for the bunny. Well, as we arrive back at the cottage... Ben, or not Ben, but um, Patty and Ciara are awake. Patty is upset because they wanted to leave and they didn't say goodbye. And, well, how do I put this? They calmed down Patty and Ciara, and Patty and Ciara convinced them to stay for the day again. Fast forward to Agnes and Ant playing outside with a football. Ant ends up taking Agnes to a locked shed where Patty keeps all of his biggest secrets. <clears throat> where we then learn that Patty and Ciara have been kidnapping troubled families, stealing their life savings, murdering the parents, and then kidnapping the children, cutting off their tongues so they cannot speak the evil that is going on. Roll the credits there. Not really. Um, after which, or during which, I'm sorry, uh... Ant tells Agnes to grab her phone and take photos of all of the photos of different families that have come and been murdered so she could show it to her parents. Now, we're going to fast forward to the climax here because now there's only like six to eight minutes in between this and the actual climax. Well, the beginning of it, should I say. Um, as the protagonists begin to leave, after Agnes shows them photos of everything that Ant showed her, um... Patty and Ciara end up trapping them within the compound. They shut the gates, they uh, shove a nail into the car tire, they put the bunny all the way on the top of the roof chimney, completely fucking torn apart, and then shit starts going down. The family gets stuck inside the house, they are trapped within the compound because uh, one of Patty's friends, who had been in on this the entire time, traps them, also blocking the gates, and they are all chased inside of the house. Well, Pat, well, not Patty. Ben and Louise end up barricading as much as they possibly can, and Louise has the children hide into a cupboard in the middle of the house. Well, Ben finds an open wall plank where he's able to slide in and he's able to hold there and wait until the the Patty's friend is creaking through the halls looking for him and he finds himself an opening, takes out the takes out uh, factor number three. Ow. As things progress, Louise finds a barbecue fork, the two-tongued barbecue fork from earlier in the movie when they were barbecuing, and a drain cleaner that is 91% acid. Uh, she manages to... I'm, I'm assuming she puts some of it on the fork as she stabs Patty trying to get into the barricaded room she's in, 
And then after he finally gets in, she takes it and she just squirts the bottle of, of drain acid all over him and his wounds. Blinding him, causing him all sorts of pain, blah, 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 you get the idea. And she grabs the kids and then they run again. At that point, Ciara finds Patty, takes him to the bathtub, and she starts spraying him down with the, um, with the shower head, trying to get all the acid out. At that point, Patty says, this is your turn. Go get him. Uh, she chases everyone upstairs into the attic, where our family tries to escape from the attic uh, window. And while they are still on the roof trying to get out, she basically... Uh, Corners them from the window, where I think it's, uh, no, Louise comes up from behind and surprises her. I can't remember how she, uh, how she hits her, but she hits her with something, knocking Ciara from the window. She falls under the roof, slides all the way down, knocks the ladder off, and then face plants onto the ground. I'm pretty sure she breaks her neck. Immediate death. Um, Ben finally mans up. He he dangles himself from the roof and drops to the ground so he can get the ladder. He damages his knee in the process, but he's still able to move and walk. He gets the ladder over to the family. Everyone gets down, and as they're trying to get everyone to, to run, Agnes does end up get the first uh, the, the, the head start, but Patty ends up getting a hold of her. At which point, he and the, we are at the very climax of our movie here. Patty is holding her to the side with a gun to her head, telling Ben to drop his gun. Uh, Louise is begging for him not to hurt her. And Agnes, from earlier, steals a needle of ketamine. It's horse ketamine that Patty was going to use on all three of the family members to knock them out and then, you know, murder the, the parents. But she ends up getting it for herself after... Um, hitting Patty or something like that and then they escape. She grabbed it and she's had it the entire time. So she takes it, stabs Patty in the leg with it, which immediately goes into effect and he just he loses orientation, drops to the ground. Ben goes and grabs Agnes. Louise grabs the gun and they begin to leave. And as they begin to leave and in all of his rage from being kidnapped, watching families die, watching his parents die, he takes a brick and just bashes Patty's head in as he's screaming. Ah, 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 ah. Which they foreshadowed about 20 minutes earlier when Patty and Ben were out on a hilltop screaming to let out their frustrations. And as Patty just lays there getting his face bashed in and keeps doing it as he's screaming. Eventually he just stops with one more scream. Oh! And then our camera pans away. And then we have our ending scene, of course. Peaceful ending scene. And the movie ends. I will be honest, that movie fucked me up yesterday. I, I struggled to get through it because a lot of the scenes that I haven't mentioned through this uh, this review, they, they triggered a lot of my PTSD pro uh, moments, uh, a lot of childhood memories that I wish would have been locked away. But I struggled and I, tr I tried my damnedest to make it through the movie, which I did because I shouldn't allow my past traumas to keep me from enjoying a good movie. No matter how many triggers it, it hits. So. But. On the flip side of that. Is. Personally. I feel that. Even if. Like. If a, if a movie of this genre. Psychological thriller. If it does not mess you up. In one way or another. Then it's not an actual thriller. Especially not psychological thriller. It was very well written. It was very well acted. I mean. If. If. You can call someone to have panic attacks while watching a movie. Then you're doing a good job with your movie. As long as there's no R word in it. Let's put it that way. No, no S A in it, which there isn't. So I'm, I'm okay. I'm glad with that. There is one scene that I felt was completely inappropriate and did not need to be in, but 
we'll say that it was in for artistic value, even though those children did not need to be in it. So, but hey, it's it's neither here nor there. The movie's over. It's actually a good movie, and I highly recommend it, recommend seeing it, especially since James McAvoy carries that movie so hard. But those children, they did a very, very good job. I mean, Agnes, you could feel the fear when she was acting afraid, and and you like even before it was ob well, no matter what it's obvious when he first shows up that he that there's something wrong with that he's trying to warn people because of his tongue but with with a kid that can only go ah 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 for the entire movie the kid's acting is phenomenal so i highly recommend it and i want to know what your opinions are did you like the movie do you feel like you want to see it blah 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 you get the idea you know me, want, next time I go see a movie, I'm going to review it just like I have been recently. But thank you for, for sitting through my rant. Oh, by the way, yeah, with that whole um, bashing Patty's head in thing, and is 100% definitely a serial killer now. He was totally Dextered by doing that. Or Dexter's brother, take your pick. Either way, all in all, fantastic movie with fantastic acting. Uh, someone with a lot of inner trauma myself, this movie did a good job at triggering a few, and I can and not help but respect that. So, a psychotic thriller that actually lives up to the job. So, yeah. That's all I got. Thank you for joining my rant. Remember to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Everything the bottom corners tell you to do. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bad News Harris, out.